Welcome to the Real Puddins Podcast. I'm Brandon. And this is Alex. And today we're going to be doing some stuff, talking about some movies. Talking about some movies. Some movies that I was forced at gunpoint to watch. I've just been hounding you. All right, fine. I'll call it a hounding. But either way. So, last time we talked, we talked about some things. You ready to go back and talk about the Pokemon movie? Oh, no. We're not starting that up again? We're not going to start the Pokemon movie. We're not even going to talk about Toy Story or Shrek. (laughs) Um, What we are going to do is talk about the movie you watched yesterday. Yeah, uh, for the third time. Three times? Uh, to really break it down, the movie we're talking about today is called Red Cliff. And I am all for foreign cinema, uh, especially since we are American. So for those people who are listening outside of America, you're, that would be your domestic. But for me, I'm a big fan of foreign films. So this was not a very hard push for me. What the push was, he told me it was a long movie. Brandon's like, oh yeah, it's a, it's a long movie. It's an epic movie. I'm like, all right, cool, yeah. Not five hours of movie. He only watched two and a half, and he's complaining. Three yes, times, I, though. So that's... Yeah, well, the reason why is because there was a lot to take in. And when you were joking before about how expensive this movie was to me that was made, I see the reasons why. That was an epic first half. And it just gets better. And I'm not, I'm not going to deny you on that. I'm, my complaints with that movie have nothing to do with the length. I think that they've pushed the limit. And I think every once in a while you need a film that is that grand. You need a movie that really pushes that boundary of, if I'm going to make an artistic film, I'm giving you every bit of it, every angle. The historical connections, perfectly fine. There were some things in there that I'm going... Your editor should be, like, drawn and quartered. Probably was. It's China. Oh, well, in that case, then I'm perfectly fine with the outcome of it. What makes Red Cliff so interesting for me is how it was shot. It was shot with the grandeur. But the problem is it is dated now. There are some movies that don't transfer over from even 10 years ago, which is kind of sad, especially for where Chinese cinema has gone to from over the past 10 years. You get a chance to talk about this movie too, man. Okay. Go so for it. This I movie know you is love this the movie. story of a historical battle in ancient imperialistic China, the Battle of Red Cliff, hence the name Red Cliff. Mm-hmm. This story, which was a series of, of history, was developed into a video game we all know as Dynasty Warriors. So this could have been on the Geek Out. Yeah, you could have done this on a Geek Out episode and do the comparisons of this too. Once Dynasty Warriors caught a good amount of traction globally, they China did a movie. And boy was it ever like watching a live action version of Dynasty Warriors. It, it should have. It's exactly what it was. And I love Dynasty Warriors. So like let's let me Take myself out of my critic seat for a second and explain why I love this movie. Okay, that you never off, said that. Part. I love, love the art of war. Mm-hmm. I love the study of tactics. Uh-huh. And if you get nothing else in that film, Juge Leon will explain to you some tactics while he's waving his his his, his half his, a feather, his half <laughs> his half wing, or you know, and you get to watch him. He'll, he'll create a, a tactic, or he'll think about a tactic, and then you get to watch it play out in the battlefield. And how it works. And then you have the most epic character in in the entirety of Chinese cinema. Oh, the entirety. Guan Yu. Yes. With the beard and the glaive. And how amazingly badass he was. Yeah. You can't tell me he wasn't. No. It and if you remember playing Dynasty Warriors, one of the best characters to use. Guan Yu. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, what was also cool was giving more depth to certain characters. It was like, when you look at the tactician, you never think about, he's more than just a tactician. The man was very cultured. Mm -hmm. And he played it off as, you know what? I don't know much. I know very little. And he knew way more. Mm -hmm. Um, His meeting, (laughs) There are some there are some scenes where I go that guy was showing. Did you get to the hundred thousand arrows part? Yes. Okay. How awesome was that? Impressive, 
But I was more impressed by the fact of he showed how much culture he has. He knew the gift of Gab. That's why he's my favorite character. Lube was one of my uh, was one was another surprise character in that film. Okay, because you always know him as like he he he's the the leader of that section right. of the map in right. Dynasty Warriors. But him making shoes for his soldiers, where you know, like literally making shoes. shoes. It was it was a really cool thing to see, just which gives more depth to him and why they're willing to follow him, why they cared about his baby while they were being burned alive. Right. So yeah. I think that when it comes down to it, is that like a successful video game adaptation movie? We have one. I mean, if you we really have one, if you really want to go there, I mean, it's yeah. really not an adaptation because you're really talking about the fact that they of, run around <laughs> and they kill each other. It's. <laughs> It's a direct adaptation of that video game. So that's how you do a video game movie? That give it to the Chinese. Give it to the Chinese and make it exactly. extremely long. Yeah. He only watched one half of it, folks. I know. He still has another disc. Uh, yeah, I know. But there's a the reason why I stopped. That was a even with just half of it, that was a lot to take in. And that's the reason why I had to go through and restart it. the stories. Yeah, because at first I was watching it just as, okay, I'm going to watch this movie. And I got... Like a halfway through and went, I've stopped watching this as, you know, as a critic. I was just enjoying a movie. And so I started again and then I was looking at how they shot the film and I went, wow. The editing of using the same close-up scenes as filler is where I go. They could have shortened this some. But other than that, showing how many people are actually there and actually having enough actors. And this is before the time of, oh, well, are you going to shoot 10 and just make, you know, 100 rows of 10 people and there's an entire... No, they had to get like 100,000 people. <laughs> people to stand there with actual weapons. Now, there was a couple of scenes that you can tell these people were acting because they had run up towards each other and just stop and stare at each other and just kind of move their sticks forward. Meh. There's been some advancements because some of the more current films have done that. Heck, better. some of the better TV shows. Battle of the Bastards, Game of Thrones. Yeah. The extras were killing each yeah. other. <laughs> Those extras put in work. Yep. But I also say that there is a time period where this film is actually dated where there's only so far you can go. Mm -hmm. And the same situation happened into an arena that I know you cannot stand, but the Bollywood cinema world has also gone from very cheeky cheeky movies to you can see there's a good idea they just didn't have the ability to go through and execute it uh padmati was was a bollywood movie that came out i think two years ago recently hit up uh, in the theaters here in the u.s last year epic level movie and i'd love to see more movies like this and now yes i only saw the first half of it but when you take in so much movie after a certain point, you have to go, I need a break. I need an intermission like we would do in the old school days of having an intermission. And I think that's what that movie really is setting you up for mm -hmm. is you go through and you watch one half of it in one sitting and then you take your intermission, let all that soak in and then you pick right back up and I want to see what happens next. So for me, it's kind of like, let me, yeah, you only got through one half. Well, that means that we can talk about this again next week on The Real Pundits. We'll talk about the conclusion, and we'll save your rating until you've seen the whole thing. Exactly, because I wasn't going to give a rating yet. All right, so, so we're going to segue from that. Which is one heck of a segue of talking about Asian film. The cheesiest of American films. Oh, come It's not that on. bad, but it's pretty it, bad. I want to see how. what proof do you have that, the, that this movie is cheesy. So why don't you announce what movie it is first off? Smoke and Aces. Okay, Smoke and Aces, which is one of my favorites. Because one of the hookers from Hustle and Flow is an assassin. Wow. I can't <laughs> believe you. Th that's the, the, the moment that you bring Alongside up. Alongside of Alicia Keys. Now, for those of us who don't want to sit there and, and point that character out as such, why don't we go with Cookie from Empire? She was a hooker before she was an assassin before she was Cookie. We're moving forward. She was a hooker first. She's also the mom in uh, Karate Kid, which is my problem with Karate Kid, because I keep thinking, ha ha, your mom's a hooker. <laughs> you know I you're going way too far, man. I do. Uh, you're, you're going way too far. No. 
No, I, okay. So in all seriousness, there's a few th- there's a few things about this movie I don't like, and she's one of them. And it's not that I thought her scene was epic. The timing, her on- emotional range in this film was the first time I've seen her use some real emotion, and I enjoyed it. Okay, so but she as an actor is somebody I don't like. Leave that aside. If We're I take that out of there. Um, if you take that out of there. What the thing that I want to bring up the about, story got a little too convoluted at the end. No, I thought it was perfect. The whole father son dynamic was. I uh, thought it was perfect. A little convoluted. You think it's Why convoluted? Why is he snitching on his on his daddy? That was the whole point. But the one thing I wanted to bring up before you got into talking about hookers, this movie is a prime example of how to do pacing. Oh yeah. How because to, how to start slow and ramp up and then go back to being slow and then ramp up a little again. Yeah. And then taking several different angles of one story. It's again, wait a minute. What is this? Every week we're going to talk about Ryan Reynolds? Because again, we have a movie that showcases Ryan Reynolds in a non-comedic. We to get him on as a guest. No, he was still comedic. He had, he had a couple of one-liners. A couple, but not the way he, he ramps off in the majority of the films. But what makes Smoke and Aces for me is... You have the different views of the different characters, and they were shot differently. Um, Chris Pine is in this one, which is one of my all-time favorite. Like, oh yeah, that's Chris Pine. See, I get that with Jeremy Piven. Like I said, I was going to save this movie oh. to, for my ode to Jeremy Piven. He's not dead. I love Jeremy Piven. He's and not everything dead yet, Jeremy though. Piven does. And this movie, like, there was a couple. How are you giving actors? an ode to somebody who's not dead? Because his career is. Oh. Come on, really? I, look, I just said I love Jeremy Piven. This is not an insult. The guy's but directing he doing? stuff. He's directing stuff. Okay, fair enough. I mean, what he he did his entire run on um was Entourage, it? Entourage, which was great. So let's go over the synopsis of this film. Right, please, please do. Basically, before, before we get too far and just talk it's a movie crap. about several groups of assassins gunning for the same guy for the same price. It's not like they've all been offered more money. They mm-hmm. it's just different groups. One guy's solo, some go in a team, but they've all been offered money to kill this famous magician who. Is got well known mob ties who is now snitching on the mob, which is why he's wanted dead. He also likes to do a bunch of drugs, bang hookers, and uh, did. I mean, he, he likes to party too much, and I mean, that's kind of what he, he's shut up in a hotel room knowing he's got a hit out for him, and he's uh, he's partying his butt off. And then it's you give the synopsis. watching these watching these assassins. Each gun for the guy without necessarily getting in each other's way. And then there's a cute little love story between two assassins. That I could have done without. Okay, I'll let you have that one. Because that was another was saying... one of those cheeky things. That's what the that's what her and leading into Alicia Keys right. leads into the romance. And that's the thing I don't need. Um because it, you're 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 hired guns, you're assassins, you're hit people. Uh-huh. Right? I can't say hit man because there's hit people. Hit that people, yeah, there's women in it. So that's to me that's the most asinine thing like okay so you guys are getting shot at and it's got you you know adrenaline's pumping adrenaline's pumping but you're going to be focused on saving her instead of getting to your mark and making your money i think at that point you he stopped just caring. met her he just he stopped you but you shot him at a grouping her. of assassins like no one knows each other you know the same situation happened in hotel artemis but where better. you had oh man but better oh Hotel Artemis uh, is downright one of my all-time favorites for this year so far. But like I can watch it several times. Here's my here's my issue. Okay, I thought we were gonna talk the positives. We are okay. Here's here's your issue. here's my issue. Like it's the it's the love story. Okay, you, you remove of... that entire thing from there. The crazy like meth head assassins were fantastic. Yeah, Chris. They Pine. reminded me of the Road Warriors. Yeah, it was Chris Pine acting. Way different than anything yeah. knows him as a star as Captain you've got, Kirk. You've got the guy from, um, you got the guy with the, the cuts all over his face. Yeah. I mean, he was fantastic. You've got, I mean. And as much as you can't Jeremy stand Pitt the actress. Ryan Reynolds. The sniper scene. The ha- sniper the scene The way it happened. Because there was already one action scene running. And then all of a sudden you hear this boom. And that's what starts up from across the way. The shot was done almost almost Tarantino-esque, because you would across several That's the other comment I was going to make. Ah. This is what happens when you take a director who takes who, who decides to use other directors like seasoning. Mm-hmm. He takes a <laughs> dash of Tarantino and a hint of Guy Ritchie. 
Okay. So he's making up the, a movie stew. He, he is making a action movie stew. And he did a good job because he, he got a chance to show to show off different styles. Because the rest of it was him. But you got a lot of Tarantino influence, and you saw a lot of um, Guy Ritchie influence. But there was a lot of, of of certain shots that neither one of those two would do. Yeah. Um, the pacing was far better than Guy Ritchie does, and the dialogue wasn't anywhere near as good as Tarantino would do it. But, but it, it was done in a different way. It was in a different way, but it, it felt perfect for. There was a lot of. Yeah. Almost, you'd there feel would have like been more, ad-libbing. There would have that. been more conversation if it was a Tarantino film. Oh, yeah. there would have, You'd have gotten a lot more deep into the characters. But with this... It would have maybe been a five-hour long film. Okay, we're going back to this five-hour long film thing. But no, we. I thought that Smoking Aces is... It sits in the arena of... This is a well-put-together film. Well-put-together film. Definitely, definitely not in my top 20. I would say it's in mine. It's, it's, it can't be in mine. There's now, what knocks it out of my top 20... Is Smoking Aces two or three? I didn't know about it. Oh yeah, I didn't know about a three. You actually caught me off guard. I didn't. I knew they made a two, and I, I just said I refused to watch it. But I did not know they made a three. That's highly impressive. But no, I, I thought it was a well-rounded movie. Even with the the hokey ending, I was willing to let it go because you needed some type of way of coming down off of the intensity of that movie. Because by the time you get to the end of that movie, Ryan Reynolds is beat to garbage i love that he's just he hits that done point and pulls the cord yeah knowing he's about to get fired or put in jail it was just at a certain point what other options do you have you know without of course ruining the movie for anybody else so what are you going to give it as far as your ranking what, let's give a real pundits ranking for and no smoking, uh, smoking aces. aces 3 doesn't come out till 2021 by the way they really are going to do that yeah, it's I really was it's not the, expecting. It's the talk. It's not for sure yet. Why at this uh, because point? Because you're it's... not. You're never going to capture the same magic. Because of... it's Hollywood, and they gotta. Yeah, I know. But okay, so my rating is uh one point five out of five. What was that again? I'm 1. sorry, 5 I must have. Five out of five. Headf- one point five. Are we gonna have to do the averages of our, of our two yeah, scores? Yeah, we'll go to the punning score. Okay, which is an average. Um, I, I'm gonna give it as much as I want to give it a three point five. Uh, watching it again recently, you start going, yeah, this was fine for its time period, so I'm going to give it my three. So, so it's a two. Yeah. That's yep. a two out of five. That's sad for a, a movie that we both like. Yeah. Um, it's just... Two directors out there that do it better. It's a very it's a movie that mirrors their style, and I appreciate that, and I appreciate it for what it is, but... But for its time period, he had... To, to come out with a movie like I, that. I, I appreciate what he did. It's not a bad film. And it's got Jeremy Piven in it, so it wins me over that way. Oh, is that what... Got, it really would. Like, no matter what, it would win me over with Jeremy Piven in it. But I do have to take some points away. I have to take some points away for, A, the stupid plot reveal at the end. Okay. That is, it's stupid and it's cheesy Which and it's unnecessary. Which in a Tarantino film, you would have never gotten that plot reveal. They'd have left it wide open for you to figure it on your to own. To guess it. Yeah, figure it out. But that's... We didn't need it. Unnecessary. So they lost a whole score there on that. And then... The ending is what got you. Yeah. Well, the ending, that one, the love story, that's two. Yeah, that's part of the... That's all part of the, the wrap-up. I mean, but yeah, the the, basically the... Act 3 is what... Like, if that movie would have been done by Tarantino, like, say that Guy Ritchie did the first half, uh-huh. and then Tarantino did the last half, it had probably been a perfect film. Wow. But that director decided to put his own spin on it. And it, he didn't do bad, it just wasn't great. So it was, wasn't what, even really good. It was okay. So what killed you was the third act. Yeah, the third act. Everything else was fantastic. The build up, the character introductions were fantastic. The way that the way that you got into you understood each character as they were introduced mm-hmm. as much as you absolutely needed to. Some got a little more time, some got a little less time, but you didn't need any more time or less time on any one of them. So everything in act 1 and 2 was perfect. Act 3 terrible. Okay. Now, I know we're not really talking about other movies tonight, but I do have to bring up a topic. And since we're in this arena, assassin movies. We've... Ninja Assassin's probably the best one I've ever seen. Well, I'm not talking well, like what was the best assassin movies that you've ever seen. There was a lot of common trends during that time period. And I do mean... I'd say from that... 98 to 2010. Well, the reason why I said common themes is because of rapper-actor Common playing almost the exact same character 
that he did in Smoking Aces and Wanted. And John Wick 2. Yeah. So, I mean, he's been running the same... He was something else, too. Well, I mean, as far as, like, the assassin character. I forgot all about Wanted. Speaking of terrible disappointments in my life. Why do you consider that one a a terrible disappointment? Because Morgan Freeman could have done better. Not in the role, but making choices and being in a movie that was garbage. Okay, so this is where we, we... We're gonna have to take this fight into the geek out. Because yeah. I want to get started with you on this one, but all of mine is based off of... The comic. Oh, I love and own that comic. I'm going off the performance that... Uh, what's his name that played Professor X? Wow, I can't remember his name right now. Yeah, yeah. so I'm going based off of him. I'm going based off of Common. I'm going based off of Angelina Jolie and the jobs they did in that film. Then I'm going based off the writing of mm-hmm. the film, of mm-hmm. the graphic novel the film, mm-hmm. and then the fact that the only saving grace was Morgan Freeman, which is fine normally. He uh-huh. saved Bruce Almighty and hit in between him and Jim Carrey, and they made a really stupid story entertaining, and I appreciated it. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, as much as he saved the film, he just he just held it up by a rope from sinking. He didn't pull it up over the water. We just didn't lose the boat. Okay. We will talk about this. I'll, I'll have you come on to the geek out, and I'll, I'll let you get jump knee deep into it because I would like to see what your point of view is and what your rating for. Don't tell me now, because we're gonna save this. Because I want to go through and rewatch it all over again to see maybe was I just jaded because of the entire time I was comparing it to the comic book, or did you hate it or did you like it? Well, I guess we'll have to find out on the geek out, but. Sans that, the reason I was bringing up the whole assassin thing is we're slowly starting to see that trend come right back we around. Don't you don't think that's needed we don't in need film? It. We don't need it. Why not? Because we need... I'd rather see, like, Contras mm-hmm. and Commando and stupid, stupid mindless action before you give me convoluted assassin movies. Okay, then... The reason for that... Okay, let me, hear, let me hear the reasons for that. In the last five years, pick the most three convoluted films Hollywood's done. Oh, gosh. There's tons of them. Okay. How many of them were good? I have four. Okay. That I go... Or out, of, out of probably a hundred. Easily. Four out of a hundred. That would get a That's four, four or percent. five. A four or five for me. So four to five percent. Yeah. Of of out of uh, of of assassin movies made in the last five years, were good. Yeah. Okay. That is my genre. It's one of my favorite ones. Right. We don't have enough intelligent creative writers in Hollywood. Okay. To pull off convoluted and thought provoking, we've got some really good independent writers. Okay, so that's why I wanted stuff. to see if where where you were going with this because if you go with mainstream Hollywood, yeah, we're we not putting out we're not putting out great ones. You go independent or what is considered uh, wanna, now independent. You want to show form? me some guy doing straight to Netflix. Like anything Netflix touches seems to be good for eight episodes. Uh, <laughs> but even even a movie like Blight, which okay. I should have hated because I love the source material. Because mm-hmm. that was Shadowrun. Mm-hmm. I don't care what anybody says. That was Shadowrun. Oh, it was totally And I Shadow loved Run. it. And I loved it. But... Should have hated it. You should have, but then you get to something like Hotel Artemis, which gives a well-rounded story, amazing actors, straight to Netflix, done by an indie. You think that's where it should have gone? Oh yeah. I don't. I mean, because in the box office, I already looked it up because I was doing my research. It, it didn't. The American hit audience right. doesn't want that in their theaters. They're not going to go pay fifteen dollars for something they could wait to watch on Netflix. This is the problem with theaters. They're too expensive, mm. and we've conditioned the American audience to only want to watch blockbusters. You're going to get the cinephiles. Mm. They're going to come out to the theaters. Yeah, to watch whatever we can on... Right. If we can afford it, we're going. Right. Period. We got the time, we're going. Period. Mm. Like, right now, I want to go watch the Green Book. I don't have time. Green but Book. But I would love to see the film. Green Book and Mid-90s is right now on my current list. Yeah, both of those. Because Jonah Hill directing, and it looks... It's spot on to the 90s, too. It reminds me of kids, like a retelling of kids. And this reason I want to go see it's it and not, see it's if not it's not same. as... It's not the same as kids. It is as gritty as... I read the... I read the... 
the spoilers of the film because I was really curious about it. Mm. And I know I don't have time to go see it. All right. Um, it's nothing like kids, but it's everything like the 90s. Which, to me... Latchkey kids just hanging out. Yeah, and that reminds me of... Your childhood and kids. And kids. But it doesn't have the same, like... It doesn't have the Larry kids. Clark, like, twist and, like, yeah. like gummo was. What happened? Yeah, whoa. Uh, that that it, Although kids did give me the greatest subway scene ever. It gave a lot of good scenes. It's like, how do you say hello to all your friends? Take a 15-minute scene and show saying hello to everybody. Oh, I'm talking about I Have No Legs. Oh, I Have No Legs is another great one. I'll but, still like randomly be walking. I have no it. legs. That's I so have sad. no legs. And then like just shaking like <laughs> with change in it. I have no legs. I have no legs. But look at what Larry one Clark the... did though. I mean, during that time yeah. period, he he slapped people awake to going, this is what your kids are doing right now. Oh, I get it. I understand it. It's the good thing about the mid nineties. It's more of a, it's got a better feel to it than, than AIDS and rape. True. And that's where. But I'm, the Green Book is this movie that, like, Vigo Mortensen you think that's, dude. You think that's going to be that's the, the that's the that's the movie this year. That's you think that's going to be the movie. Have you seen the trailers for it? Well, I've seen the trailer several times. I'm very interested in seeing it. Just like again, like you said, I don't have time. I haven't had the time to. But will I? Oh, the yes. second I get a chance to. The second I get Vigo a Morten, chance. Vigo Mortensen. Vigo Mortensen. Okay. So on my top, right, my that, list of your top fan ten, boy? is this your, your yeah? Fan the boy list thing? of my top ten actors. Vigo's on it. Okay. Like Vigo's right there. So. I'm super stoked to see Lucifer slash Aragorn. I always forget about that role. What, Lucifer? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Prophecy, man. Yeah. Opposite Christopher Walken. That guy has done a lot of movies. Vigo Mortensen like... has done a ton, and you don't even know it. A yeah. History of Violence. History you of Violence. You can't tell me that movie wasn't fantastic. Again, we're going right back into the, the, the tertiary car- uh, storyline I was going with today. Assassin movies. Not an assassin film. He you was a mob be, enforcer. Yeah, but still out of the mob very movie. much. <laughs> that was more. That Again, was more, a movie with pacing. That was the pacing was pacing. that was like I was not but expecting what happened. You're at the looking end of that. at that was more of the same lawless style. That's a crime movie. Yeah. That, except that's more like what happened to Ray Liotta's character after Goodfellas. Okay, that's a good that's way what of, happened that, in History of Violence. Uh, that's a good way of, of twisting. Except for that one, History of Violence was done way better. One hundred percent. We'll have to review that next time. You want to do that? Not a history of violence, but we'll have to talk about. Um, we'll have to find a movie that similar to it, obscure. Okay. Most yeah. people probably haven't seen, like No Country for Old Men or something like oh, that. Oh, No Country for Old Men. Except that's on the list. Ah, shh, the list. Don't know what number it is. We haven't even talked about the list yet. Yeah, we have. Not really. We kind of talked about the list. We kind of talked about the list. We haven't gotten into the list, but we will very soon. And on that note. We have rambled on about a couple of different things tonight. And, uh, of course, we have to end this with our, our, our normal shutdown of the show. If you have any questions, concerns, complaints, angry messages, go ahead oh, and email us. Trust me, you guys us. probably have tons of angry messages, email so fill up the mailbag. Mailbag at realpundits.com. Contact me on Twitter at brandrealpundit. And you can contact me at ANA Real Pundit. And, of course, if you have a movie that you would love to talk about, hit us up. And we will gladly talk about it. And maybe we can get Brandon from Stop Talking Long Times about hookers. Look, it was only a brief moments of hookers. Brief? Time. Good gravy, man. Well, hookers was applicable to the subject matter. I'm going to let this one go. Now, on that note, people, we've done it again. And we're going to be next time doing our 30th Real Pundits episode. We're trying to chase that 50 down. Yeah, we're going to get to 50, then 100, and then eventually we'll be into the... Well, why don't we just stop right there? Let's get to yeah. 100 and see what we'll happens. Be, we'll, be at the, we'll be at the numberless listing of... The numberless listing, so I can... I don't actually... really know what this is anymore. <laughs> but All yeah, right, folks. Check us out, and uh, like always... Go watch go, something. Go watch something. Bye.